In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in the Advent season. And this Sunday we are meditating on the theme, Hope of Salvation. Hope of Salvation. In the scripture portion that has been read to us, especially the Gospel lesson, chapter 1 of Mark, verse 23, we observe, just then, a man with an evil spirit in him came into the synagogue and screamed. I want us to take note of the scream, the screaming man. Scream in hopelessness. Hope is always necessary at a time when there is real hopelessness in lives. When Jesus was there in the synagogue, and it is at that time, a man with an evil spirit comes into the synagogue and he begins to scream. There is hopelessness in humanity. And we here see the screaming humanity. All of us who are very ardent readers of newspaper, of those of us who are diligent in watching news on the television, many times we get depressed because papers cover news of so much of violence in humanity. There is degradation of human values everywhere. There is perpetuation of violence when we read it and we are seeing it. There is poverty when people are dying of hunger. Behavior of the people, split personalities. When individualism is growing, when communitarianism is becoming less and less the priority of people, we see people begin to become into split personalities. People are governed by greed everywhere. And this causes a lot of violence among the humanity. There is hopelessness in the realm of human beings. And thereby, we see the screaming humanity for hope, for liberation, for restoration, and for salvation. On the other hand, I want to read one verse from the epistle of, to the Romans, chapter 8 and verse 22. For we know that up to the present time, all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. Now there is hopelessness in another realm apart from humanity. There is hopelessness in creation. And therefore, the creation is groaning. It is not just an ordinary groaning, but it is groaning with pain. And Paul comes up with an imagery in order to describe what sort of pain the creation is undergoing. The imagery is the creation groans with pain like the pain of childbirth excruciating pain, pain involved with death. On the one side we have screaming humanity for hope of salvation and on the other hand we have the creation 
groaning in pain and pain of childbirth in hope of salvation because there is degradation of creation around us. There is a lot of awareness now in the world. We were talking to somebody, a relative of us who lives in some other country and he was trying to describe when we travel, he says, we travel with all the uh, uh, window panes of the car pulled up and he says if you forget and if you happen to put your hand out of the window he says immediately we will have sunburns and the reason he describes is because in that part of the world there is depletion of the ozone layer degradation of creation depletion of natural resources human beings have begun to deplete the natural resources there is <coughs> deforestation we are talking about the global warming because of deforestation on the other hand there is desertification of the earth places which have been green places which were once with a lot of plenty of water flowing today they are becoming into deserts that is one side deforestation another side desertification of the earth and also the resultant consequent to this there is extinction of several animal species bird species and reptile species the creation there is a degradation of this beautiful creation of God and in this degradation or in this hopelessness the creation is groaning in pain in hope of salvation so on the one side we see the screaming of the hopeless humanity and on the other side we see the groaning of the hopeless creation both screaming and groaning in hope of salvation salvation in other terms of redemption or even we could say restoration the old testament lesson that has been read to us heralds this hope in this world i'm going to read chapter 3 jephaniah and verse 17 <coughs> jephaniah 3:17 the Lord your God is with you. This is the hope. This is the good news. The Lord your God is with you. How do you make it into a phrase, this phrase into one word? God with you. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Jephaniah is already giving us the good news of the coming of the king Emmanuel God with us the Lord your God is with you what happens when the Lord your God is with you something must happen this hopelessness must turn into hopeful situations because the difference is made by the Emmanuel not by anybody else how does the situation change he says his power gives you victory the power of God who is with you the presence of God which you enjoy gives you victory that is hope the Lord will take delight in you the Lord has not left you the Lord has not left you in darkness the Lord has not left you in hopelessness. The, when God is with you, God gives you victory over every situation that box you down into hopelessness. Maybe there are several reasons for our hopelessness. But then God says, I am with you and I give you victory. <coughs> the Lord will take delight in you 
And in his love, he gives you new life. The chapter with hopelessness is done away with. And the chapter with hope is being given by God. The old is passed away. And a new life is being catered to everyone who hopes in God. He will sing and be joyful over you. This is a wonderful promise from God. The Lord your God is with you and he will give you a new life. Whatever may be the situation of hopelessness, God is the one who gives us a new life. Emmanuel, this is what the angels have proclaimed. And we are meditating in this Advent season, the coming of Jesus. Simeon, when Mary takes the Christ child into the temple, you know what Simeon said? The words of Simeon in Luke 2.30 with my own eyes, I have seen your salvation. Jesus is the salvation. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the liberation. Jesus is the restoration. Jesus is the salvation. Simeon proclaims the good news. Lord, we have been living in hopelessness. We have been living in utter darkness. And here, Jesus Christ is born. And Simeon proclaims, God, with my own eyes, I have seen your salvation. Simeon takes Jesus and tells and proclaims that God has granted us salvation in the Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, on his earthly ministry, <coughs> was in dialogue with many people. Once there is a discussion between the disciples. I'm reading from Luke 18 verses 26 and 27. The people who heard Jesus asked, Who then can be saved? Because this way of salvation for humanity, as Jesus proclaimed, was not a bed of roses. It was not just something that just comes up. But Jesus has said, everyone must take his or her own cross daily and then follow Jesus Christ who is Emmanuel, who is God with us. And the dis disciples begin to discuss among themselves <coughs> the possibility or the impossibility of salvation. They ask, God, Jesus, who then? Can be saved. Jesus answered, What is impossible for man or human beings is possible for God. That means salvation belongs to God. Salvation is a gift from God. Salvation is catered only by God, and there is no other means. And there is no other person. We see this proclamation in the book of Acts. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You and your family shall be saved. This is the salvation of God to the screaming humanity. Humanity that is split with several problems. Now we are sitting here at a time after 2,000 years that Jesus had come. After 2,000 years that Jesus has given us salvation. After 2,000 years that Jesus has Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried and rose again and lives as our God welcoming every person in every generation to his generous salvation forgiveness of sins some of us would happily testify that i am saved some of us could also point to a meeting or an event and say i was saved 
Some of us can even pinpoint to a date and time and say, I was saved. But God's word explains salvation in all the three tenses. In the present tense, salvation in the past tense, salvation in the present tense and salvation also has a future connotation. What is the past tense of the salvation? You know Paul said, for it is by God's grace that you were saved and not by your own works. You were saved by grace through faith. It is done, the salvation had begun in your life. Your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been washed away. Your robes have been made white. You have been received into the community of God's people. And here is salvation. For by God's grace, through faith, that you were saved. You were saved through faith. This is the justification that God had given us. We were sinners, yet in Christ, God counts us to be righteous. It is unmerited favor of God in our lives. We were saved when we believed in Jesus Christ. This is the justification. But in the present tense, salvation has a present connotation. Is salvation finished once for all when you had believed in Jesus Christ? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of Christ's death, for us who are being saved, it's God's power. The message of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For those of us who are being saved, it is a present continuous tense and a present continuous process. For those of us who are being saved, it is God's power. What is God's power? This is a daily life living in Lord Jesus Christ. It is being saved from the power of sin in your life every day. When you testify that you have been saved, it doesn't mean that the power of sin will not follow you. Sin follows us. But then God gives us power over sin to overcome sin and lead a life of sanctification. Sanctification is an everyday process of living in God, overcoming the power of sin in every situation, in every situation and in every day. This is the salvation in the present connotation. Then salvation has a future connotation also. Mark chapter 13 and verse 13, it reads, Everyone will hate you because of me. But whoever holds out to the end will be saved. Salvation has a future connotation. You will be saved in future from the very presence of sin when we are in the presence of God, participating in the glorification in God's presence. This is our salvation. In this hope, we live and move and have our being, being empowered by God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise God for this. We praise God for this salvation and we praise God for the hope of salvation in Jesus Christ. But secondly, we also have noted the groaning of the creation in pain. We have seen the salvation of humanity, but then what about the hopeless situation of the creation? 
Romans chapter 8 verse 20, Paul writes, For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not out of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was hope. Praise God. It is not only for the human beings that we have hope. It is not only the human beings that have the hope of salvation. But Paul says even the creation, the degrading creation, the depleting creation also has a hope. Hope of liberation. Hope of restoration. That is the right word which we can use for creation. Creation has a hope of restoration. In the scripture portion that has been read to us, God was talking about a new heaven and a new earth. The new heaven and the new earth is the hope of salvation of the creation. We praise God for that. Verse 21, it reads that creation itself would one day be set free. Praise God. There is salvation for creation. And creation hopes for this salvation. That creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay. And would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. My dear brothers and sisters. We are not to be at ease just because Jesus Christ has saved us. Saved us from sin. Saved us, is saving us from the power of sin. And will save us from the presence of sin. Let's not be content. But we as the children of God. This groaning of the creation also hopes in its salvation. Romans 8, 19, I want to read for you. All of creation, you see, all of creation waits with eager longing for God. Because salvation belongs to God and salvation only comes from God. All of creation waits with eager longing for God. For God? To do what? To reveal his sons or daughters or God's children, which are you and I. Sitting here in this morning worship, creation is eagerly longing and waiting, hoping in God that God would reveal God's children. Because the restoration of the creation has much to do with the children of God. The hope of salvation for creation is you and I. You know what Jesus said after his resurrection? In Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world. I want us to mark these words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is giving this commission for the restoration of the creation, the degrading creation, the decaying creation. Go ye into all the world. I want you all to really uh, make a fill in the blanks here. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all the creation. Creation. This commission is for the humanity. The commission is for the humanity in order to be gospel to the creation. In some versions it is nicely translated as 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Greek word that has been used there has no connotation of human beings. It only has a connotation of creation and creatures. The commission is to the human beings and the commission is a responsibility to be a good news to the creation and every creature. Jesus is only repeating the responsibility what God has given to humanity in the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, when God made humanity, this is the responsibility that God bestowed upon humanity. God said, and you shall have dominion over the birds of the air, fish of the sea, and all creeping things or living things upon the earth. This is the responsibility of humanity to be a hope for all the creation. How do we do that? We do it in following the footsteps of our own master, savior, lord, guide, friend, God, Jesus Christ. Christ saved us. And Christ wants to save the creation through us. May the good Lord empower us with his power of resurrection. And may the good Lord lead us with his Holy Spirit always to be conscious that we who have been saved are to take a stand for the salvation of the creation because the Creator wills it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.